You are listening to the Become a Guitarist Today podcast with Adam Roach. Hey there, and welcome to episode number 161 with my guest today, Anton Kambanen from the band Beast in Black. So Beast in Black have a new album coming out at the end of October called Dark Connection, which we discuss all about in today's podcast. So Anton gives us a little bit of an insight behind the recording and also about himself and his influences as well. So the opening track you're hearing is from the new album and it's called One Night in Tokyo. So make sure you click the link in the show notes so you can find where to download the album and also more about the band as well. And again, thank you to my sponsors, Custom Guitar Picks, Musician and Arnold Krakowka. You don't need a drummer to make an amazing metal song. All you need is access to tracks produced in a great studio by a great engineer. My full-length drum tracks are crafted using the best sounding samples I've been developing for over a decade and have been used by thousands of professional musicians worldwide up to the highest level in the industry including John 5 and Gus G. Stop wasting hours of your time trying to program drums and stop wasting tons of money to have your drummer record in a studio for mediocre results. With my drum tracks, you don't need to worry about any of that. Just drag and drop your tracks, press record and you're done. All of that with a killer, authentic sound. So go to my website arnokrakowka.com to start rocking. Another huge thank you to Arnold for starting production on our album, Roach and Widen, which is coming out in December. So Anton did all the drum tracks, plus he is producing, mixing and mastering the album as well, and also guest starring on one track. So again, please check out the link in the show notes where you can actually pre-order our album as well. So let's go over this interview now with Anton Cabanon. Hello. Hello, Anton. How's it going? Uh it's all right. Pretty busy and hectic, oh, but yeah. that's that's a good sign, I think. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so busy with the uh, promoting the album. Yeah, indeed, indeed. No, that's really good. So. No, excellent. Yeah. Well, congratulations with the new album. It sounds fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad if you like it. So. Yeah. No, it's really good. I mean, the, the songs and the just everything about it. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. So with the album, the guitar and the keys. So you're playing the keyboards as well, aren't you? Well, I program the keyboards and stuff like that. And we have this synth, you know, kind of our synth is our this what, what do you call it? Like artificial intelligence mm. robot lady yeah. as our keyboard player. It's actually there in the booklet and in one of the promo pictures. I don't know if you've seen that. There's this red-haired woman oh. in the tube, and we're around that. Actually, the same woman is on the album cover. Yeah, she's yeah. kind of our keyboard player, so to speak. All ah, right. Yeah, I saw the album cover. That's What's the name? Cynthia, is it? Yeah, Cynthia. Yeah, that's the woman's name on the album cover. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I like the way that you have the, you know, like the sunglasses, and you can see the actual the beast in the reflection of the glasses as well. Yeah, there's kind of some kind of a dark connection between the beast and the lady there. Yeah, that's works right. on many levels. The title, dark connection, it's about something that's between them, but also there's the con- cables connected to the spine of the lady. So. But there's the lyrical side of things uh, in the songs. Many songs deal about this you know, connection between humans and humanoid robots. What it's like to be in that kind of a future when that is reality. So. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, it's definitely the way the, the world's going. So it's, it's good to write about it as well. Yeah, let, let's see if it turns to be a good or bad thing. It's hard to say, but at least it's, it's a fascinating topic to write stuff about them. Yeah. It, it's been around for like really long time. This, you know, Philip K. Dick wrote many like times about this same thing in his books. Um, yeah. Eventually, a film Blade Runner came out in '82 based on his books, yep. where the androids and the gynoids are kind of more more human than humans themselves, mm. but still they're not treated like humans are. So that's kind of a interesting yeah. topic to write about. Yeah. 
so I've got a few friends in uh, in Finland that's, because through my teaching, I use an app called Musician, which is based in um, Helsinki in Finland. Oh, yeah, yeah I know that uh, company. Oh, do you? I never use it. I know Musician, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, they actually uh, they flew me over to Spain about two years ago as part of the teachers in Australia to represent yeah. you know, how I use it yeah. in my class. And majority are from, from Finland and uh, all over Europe, pretty much. There's like a, a team of 100 people. But yeah, the guys I was talking to, a lot of them were actually into the similar type thing what you're talking about with the, you know, the robots and the enemy films. And is that yeah, like a big thing in in Finland? I wouldn't say so. I I don't think that this robots and this science fiction is anything like the thing here in Finland. It's yeah. to me, it just felt like a return to my own kind of root. Because with my previous band, Battle Beast, I wrote three albums, and the first two albums were heavily influenced by cyberpunk. After those, I didn't write any more songs about these themes. But now it felt like, again, like something that I felt writing about. You know, in yeah. 2018, I knew that, okay, the next album is going to be mostly uh, cyberpunk influenced. I noticed on your, your videos, there's been a lot of people doing the, uh, the reaction to your film clips and your songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always nice to see that people like make the effort commenting and reacting to our new creations. So it's always a flattering. And like, even if people don't like it, it's always nice to see that hey, they still spend their time from yeah. their lives to like to <laughs> deal with the beast in black. And we appreciate that. Like, yeah, that's right. And I noticed that actually there's an instrumental version there as well. I don't know if you, did you know about that? Instrumental version of what? Sorry, I don't know. Yeah, of One Night in Tokyo. Oh, someone has made it. Yeah. At least it wasn't us. No, oh. Maybe someone removed vocals with some kind of a plug-in. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I'm sure that it's definitely not an official version if, if you have found that somewhere. So. Ah, I see. Gee, they're quick, aren't they? <laughs> These people? How are they so quick? I'm like a dinosaur myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Voice, his voice. Um, yeah, Giannis. Giannis, sorry, yeah, Giannis. He, he's amazing. He's incredible. He is a great interpreter, great singer. Uh, he gives this emotional impact to the melodies. Like he understands that the melodies need to have the certain drama element. Like it, it, it cannot be just vocal line that is flat, even though it's perfect note by note. But it, if it's flat, then it's not interesting. You know, you gotta give that emotional impact when you. Recorders and he's really, really good with that stuff. You know, and even and technically he is amazing. He can do anything, you know, from the softest, most elegant style of singing to a really macho and like a really metalhead type of sing, yeah, yeah. and everything in between. So that makes my job as a composer much easier when there's a singer like that who who can do anything with his vocals, basically. The tone of his voice as well, and. And I saw another interview where he was actually talking about you and you're saying how, like, you give him some ideas as well. That with the ideas, like, you, you've got them already in your mind. Like, you can see the finished product in your head before it's even recorded. Yeah, usually it's quite complete. Like, the songwriting is already in the very first form. The song songs are already sounding, like, really, like, arranged correctly and all the harmonies, melodies, and accents, and all that stuff is usually there. Yep. Some things change in the production, but like 99% of the songs remain the same, kind of. There's no dramatic change from the composing yep. part until the finished product. Yep. But uh, with Giannis, when we do vocal tea, often comes up with like, okay, let's like uh, add some harmony to the chorus so it sounds a bit bigger, you know, or or add an octave, like a lower octave or a higher octave to certain melody. Yeah. And sometimes he asks, hey, what if we sing this melody octave higher or lower? Sometimes I agree, sometimes I don't. And, but the melodies themselves are like already as they are composed and they don't change from that usually. So when you write your melodies, do you write them like on a keyboard or guitar, then give it to them like that? Or you actually sing it 
to say, hey, do this? Uh, I use Guitar Pro 4. It's like almost 20 years old version of Guitar Pro software. And I write the files there, but you know, vocal melody, vocal melodies, I always try myself what is singable, what is not. And the melodies, they sometimes come from an instrument like noodling on a guitar or with keyboards or just taking a walk somewhere and thinking of a sentence and then the melody that fits to the sentence. And yep. you know, it's kind of organized chaos when it comes to composing. It's hard to explain, but yeah. you, know, you just got to put the pieces together somehow. Yeah. The thing with your songs as well, like I noticed, you know, talking about the vocal melodies and then you've got your, the keyboard melodies and, you know, different sounds which go in together and then you've got your, the guitar riffs over the top, but they all blend in so well together. Yeah, well, I don't know what to say about that. It's just, again, one of these things. It just happens, like, yeah. normally. I, I just hear, hey, okay, this is great riff, and I hear the keyboard, like, duplicating it in by using, for example, triads, you know, guitar plays with the power chords, but the keyboard can add the one extra note that makes it always either minor or major chord, and it makes it a bit more, like, dramatic that in that way. Yeah. Whatever... I hear like in, in the mind and then just write it down and then I hear it yep. from that soft guitar pro four that I use. Yeah, going back to the album, uh, the, so the last two songs you got the, the two covers, which are great as well. So Bethlehem by Man of War and uh, they don't really care about us by Michael Jackson. So, had you guys played them live before, or was it just like in the studio? It's just in the studio, like all the original songs as well. We never practiced before we uh, recorded the album. Everyone does their homework yep. uh, before coming to the studio, and it's easy that way. Me and Yanis just talked about the cover songs, and instantly we felt like, hey, yeah, we both could imagine kind of those songs as based in like versions in our heads because we knew that the, those songs have the kind of features that yep. Beast in Black songs also have and we can easily adapt our style to those songs and yep. the end result is what you hear and let's see what fans will say about it on 29th of October yeah that's right at least we, we enjoyed making those covers let's see what what do the Manowar fans say and what do the Michael Jackson fans say if they hear that version we are really curious yeah well like you're saying though it does fit in with the album like it's you know if nobody knew those songs it just like it fits in with like the the rest of the songs yeah well that that's important also that you know we treat the cover songs with the same care and precision as we do for our own songs so yeah. why waste your energy and time and money and everything to make something like not 100% if we are not going to do the cover songs with 100% dedication, then we will not do it at all. Yeah. I'm glad it feels like that they fit to the album as well. So. I mean, the way you guys do that, the Michael Jackson one, it's, it sounds like the original, but it's got your flavor to it. And it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's really good. Oh, well, thanks. Thank you. It's all about like keeping the, maintaining the elements from the original songs that make the song what it is and not like, not changing the stuff that, is crucial for the original. But we kept that, and whatever room there was left, we spiced that with the Beast in Black style, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Added some instruments there, like keyboards, and gave this heavier like impact with the guitars and this kind of a menacing synth bass that on the background, there's no bass at all in the original version of oh, Michael right. Jackson. Oh, okay. so, stuff, stuff like that, because we thought, hey, there's clearly room for that. So we decided to just do it that way. And I guess the same with the uh, Man of War cover, because I, I had Ross the Boss, he was on my podcast, um, I think it was early last year or this year. So um, yeah, yeah another, another great band. So are you guys influenced by Man of War? Definitely. At, at least to, to me, Man of War is one of my favorite bands. Okay. Like my, in my top three favorites, Judas Priest and Man of War. And, Sometimes it's Wasp or Black Sabbath that, yep. that's the third favorite. It d depends on the mood, yeah. but also like Accept and UDO and you know those good old heavy metal bands. Yeah, yeah. They are my favorite <laughs> bands, the metal style. Yeah, 
yeah, thank you very much again for your, for your time, and I'm sure everyone's going to love this album once it comes out. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to talk with you, and you know, good luck with the album, mate. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Bye. All right, so all right, thank you. Yep, bye bye. See you later. Bye.